Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we're going to take a look at an extremely unique fixed blade, new, coming out from Civivi. Uh, I get my Tempest opinion, which excites me greatly. And then the top 10, top 15, bestest and mostest. <laughs> Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week was from the Marshallist on my Jack Wolf Knives Vampire Jack uh, video this beautiful thing uh, he said are you supposed to tell your viewers if you received a knife without paying for it hmm? uh, i added the hmm part but that's kind of what was implied in the question and it's a good question uh it was, if not a bit snarkily asked but a good question nonetheless um for a reviewer I, however, I, I don't tend to review knives. I'm not really much of a knife reviewer. I show close-ups of knives that I like on my channel. And uh, I tend not to do any negative reviews. You'll find even um, knives that maybe are not knives I intend to keep. Uh, if I see something redeemable in them, I'll talk about that. Uh, but to your point, the Marshallist, um, yes, uh, Jack Wolf Knives, uh, if you'll notice, uh, my video always goes up, um, you know, I have the video I'm talking about the knife several weeks before it's released. And that's only because uh, I consider Ben Belkin a friend and he considers me a content creator that uh, he wants this in the hands of. So, yeah, I get these from him and other knives and I usually mention it, um, but I most proudly mention it uh, uh, when it's, you know, from a friend like this. And this is awesome. Yes, I got this from Ben Belkin. Thank you, Ben. Once again. Uh, this Jack Wolf Knives uh, Vampire Jack, by the way, for October, uh, as Ben mentioned in the comments section, is the perfect slip joint knife for a dagger guy such as myself. Look at that symmetry. All right, the Marshallist, thank you for your comments and thank you one and all for uh, watching the videos and commenting and, and writing in. It's greatly appreciated. I love your perspectives. Or I should say, I value your perspectives. All right. I think it's time for a pocket check. No, I did not have that on me today, but I did have this most beautiful uh, Chris Reeve Sabenza 21 in my pocket today. I was just talking about this last night. Uh, I appeared on Casey's uh, channel uh, on his live show, and we were talking all sorts of knives. What a great guy. You got to check out Knives Fast if you don't. I'm sure you already do. Uh, but anyway, we did talk a bit about the uh, Sabenza, and it just got me wanting it in my pocket this morning. And something I was commenting on besides how great the knife is and how luxurious the feel of that glassy opening and closing um, or hydraulic, some people call it. Uh, I love the micarta. I believe it's end cut micarta. And when this knife arrived shortly after leap day of 2016, the day it was made, it was made on leap day. How cool is that? So this knife is like, it's only three years old, I guess. Uh, but this knife uh, came all gray. The whole thing looked as gray as can be. It all looked as gray as that blasted titanium and after having it in my hands for uh like two or three times it blackened up and it, it i was so excited to see that my car to blacken up now that is not a testimony to how grimy and greasy my hands are it's it's something about this my carta i swear uh it doesn't happen to all my my carters i kind of wish it did uh you'll find me sometimes oiling uh my my carta and then shamefully rubbing it off with a cloth as if uh i've made some sort of ethical breach perhaps i have uh this is such an awesome knife this one was sharpened i could never quite get this sharp enough for for myself i i uh, sent it to uh jared neve and he took great care of it also i did uh knock the tip off of that one he took care of the tip of that knife too um all right uh, next up in my pocket speaking of the jack wolf knives vampire jack 
Also in my pocket today was the Jack Wolf Knives Vampire Jack in that beautiful purple storm carbon fiber. Uh, so nice, man. I, I'm becoming a carbon fiber convert, but not not fully. I, I'm not going to say fully. Uh, it's not every carbon fiber I like, but just now most. Most carbon fibers I'm liking. I used to complain about the the regularity of the basket weave carbon fiber and how boring I thought that was. Well, those days are gone, and uh, I shouldn't stay in those days, right? I should uh, I should keep up with the times and see that most carbon fiber out there is unique and beautiful and cool and has some sort of uh, unrepeatable pattern. That's what I like about these. These kind of carbon fibers are the opposite of the first carbon fibers we were seeing, besides their uh, qualities in terms of weight. I'm sure these are less strong uh, tensely than the other carbon fibers. I might be wrong. Let me know. Anyway, love this one. Love that blade shape. And this is a pretty, this is a biggish slip joint. This is kind of like on the outside of what I like to carry. Um, I do have a couple of larger slip joints, but that's just for the collection, just to have. Um, in terms of dropping in the pocket and forgetting all day about it, this is perfectly sized. Uh, that blade is just about three inches. Uh, let's see. I had a couple of others. Oh, here. Uh, this one is in the state of the collection, and it's in the final uh, It's in the final topic here. This is one of the bestest and mostest, and you'll see why later. But uh, this is my new Boker Texas toothpick. Uh, this, uh, just so you know, the Marshallist, was sent to me uh, by <clears throat> uh, Chaz who was on the show, Chaz, general manager, Chaz Fisher, general manager of Boker USA. Um, I, I requested it. He asked if he could send me a Boker. And I said, yes, you can. You could send me a whole bunch of them because I really dig the brand. Uh, but I was especially curious about this little VG10 knife, kind of in the in the um, spirit of the um, Urban Trapper. Uh, this is not designed by... Um, the dude who designed the Urban Trapper, sorry, uh, failing me at the moment. Um, but I, it has that cool Texas toothpick blade, that long, slender, downward reaching uh, California clip on, uh, or Texas, so what am I talking about? California, I mean, I mean, Texas clip point on this uh, really awesome toothpick. And it has the same shape as a Texas toothpick handle, and it's got bearing action. It's very slender. Uh, this is Coca Bolo too, just beautiful Coca Bolo. Odd, odd clip, odd clip. I'm just gonna come right out and say that is an odd clip. Looks like a titanium banana. Um, weirdly uh, blasted. Nothing else on this is blasted. Just kind of incongruous, but interesting and definitely necessary for that thin knife to actually hold on to it while flipping it open. I used that to open up some bags of nuts in front of my boss today. I was like, she's not going to care. And it's because it was a cool and classy knife. Uh, if I pulled out this next one, which was my bag knife today, uh, probably wouldn't have had the same uh, laissez-faire reaction. Uh, this here uh, is what I had in my bag today. This is the Topps Express designed by Lacey Zabo, uh, a tactical knife designer extraordinaire. And actually, as I'm mentioning Lacey Zabo right now, one of his other designs, which I have, uh, is also in the in the best is and most is. I, I love this guy's designs. This is a fighter. A lot of people call it a dagger. Uh, but I'm going to get nerdy about it and say it's not a dagger. It's not symmetrical. You, you've got um, a, a shallower belly on top. Um, it, this is a fighter. This is more, look, you can see it better when you turn it upside down like this. You can see the shape of it a little bit better. It's almost, uh, almost like the clip point fighter blade you'll see on a, um, <clears throat> subhilt, a uh, loveless, uh, model sub, subhilt fighter. Great thing. Great thing is this, uh, six inch blade and, and really nice, uh, micarta sculpted, um, I have tried numerous times to carry this on my person um, in, in, in a like all day long kind of way. And it's just not easy for me to do with my lifestyle. However, I love carrying this walk in the dog. Uh, this rides upside down in my clip in or in my belt in uh, CM carry. Some of you might know what CM carry is. 
And uh, well, anyway, that's with the the handle facing down. So you can uh, reach down this way and pull it out and have it in a reverse grip. Um, coined by CMFTW. Uh, some of you guys might know who Matt Freeman was. Um, that this is a an 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 awesome knife. It's just a hair, just a hair too big for my daily concealed carry, and probably a little too much anyway. Like if heaven forbid something happened where I had to, you know, uh, be, uh, take a jacket off, take my main shirt off in front of a police officer for whatever reason, this would look bad. So this is uh, probably should just stay in my bag. But the bag knife is a a thing. Um, I keep my bag locked up at my workplace, but you know, I, I work in the kind of workplace where who knows, you might need something like this. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I haven't yet. And no one has yet. So knock on wood, and I'm going to change the subject now. Love this knife. I'm putting it down next to the others that I carried today, which were the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza 21 with the micarta inlays, the Jack Wolf Knives Vampire Jack, and the Texas Toothpick New from Boker Plus Knives. Uh, what were you carrying in your pocket? Let me know. Did you have any of these, or uh, did any of these resonate with you? Uh, what do you like about them? Uh, let me know what you're carrying. As I like to say, it's one of those one of those ways I can keep my eyes on the mavens out there. Uh, let me know what I should get and what I should carry. Uh, I want to thank our, our newest patron. That came out weird. Our newest patron is a gentleman junkie, Francis Valer. Francis Valer, thank you so much, sir. Uh, I really appreciate it. Jim does as well. Uh, this goes to help keep this show going and uh, keep uh, newer stuff coming in. Uh, like uh, I would like to get a new computer one of these days uh, to, to have a little bit more robust capability for this show. And, uh, and Francis, your help and everyone else's who, um, who is a, a patron. It helps very much. I appreciate it very much, uh, Francis. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let me show you what you stand to win uh, on Thursday night. That's tomorrow night. Uh, uh, here, let me tell you what you stand to, to win tomorrow night. Uh, that is the off grid knives, Warncliffe rapid fire blackout, uh, blackout has to be on there because there are a couple of other versions of this that aren't blacked out. This is blacked out. And actually while I have this out, I have a great comparison knife to show this with. Um, but this is a uh, a new version of their rapid fire in 14C28N. And of course, that beautiful, they're calling it Warncliffe. I might be inclined to call it sheep's foot, or we'll call it a sheep. Uh, we'll call it a Warncliffe blade. Uh, the blade is uh, has a nice point, but a very nice rounded arching drop uh, that allows you especially on the rescue model that i have in orange and it's got serrations to to get somewhat under a, a seat belt without without doing too much gouging and stabbing um it's a nice rounded surface there um who knows if you're actually thinking of using this for that purpose you might even round the tip like you see on the on the sark the uh, emerson survival and rescue knife uh this thing is a it's called the rapid rapid strike and that i mean the rapid fire and that is because it fires like uh the stoutest switchblade i've ever felt it just really uh um it doesn't jump out it 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 lunges it lunges for the throat of whatever is in front of it when it when it pops open this thing has awesome awesome action you can see it kind of shake uh i you don't you do not hear me often or ever say this thing has awesome action when I'm holding an assisted knife, but uh, this is the um, this is the exception, the exception to that rule. I also found that with the with the cold steel. I liked the cold steel. I can't remember what it was called now, uh, but I hear those did not age well. They used some sort of um, lock integrated spring, which I could have told them was a bad idea. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, this is what you stand to win. Uh, 14C28N stout. Feels great. Contoured handle. You've got those elongated hexagonal uh, 
cups divided out. Um, I wanted to show you this. This is the old, and I say old, but in a very good way, um, the zero tolerance, zero 200. This is what a lot of us think of when we think of zero tolerance. This is the kind of knife that initially jumps to mind. Well, this knife has always reminded me of this knife, and I'm very fond of the zero 200. Uh, it is that the fat handle, the the curved and textured um, G10 just feels great in hand and just feels so sure. So that is it. That is the Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway knife of uh, this month of October on the 20th. It will be on the 20th tomorrow night. Looking forward to seeing who gets this. Also, uh, they do the clip right, uh, recessed in the handle with flat screws. Uh, so there you have it. Looking forward to giving that one away. Uh, so uh, everyone stay tuned. And if you want to get in on this action, or I just got a bunch of new knives from Dave, this old sword blade reviews, we're going to be giving some of those away. Awesome, awesome knives. Uh, join us on Patreon, or at least check us out. Go to Patreon. You go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, and you check out the three levels of support we got. There's a lot of exclusive content. There are stickers. There are... Um, uh, chances to win knives etc so um well if you want the good feels go over to the knife junkie dot patreon slash patreon and check it out again i'll say that again that's the knife junkie.com slash patreon the get upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases get upside is an app you put on your smartphone and whenever you need to get gas search your area for savings claim your discount fill up your tank and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone and that's it you've just got cash back visit the knifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving again that's the knifejunkie.com slash save on gas you're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I'm very excited uh, to talk about the Devo Buzz, our good buddies over at Devo Knives. Now that's uh, Kev, that's Kevin Johnson, Lefty EDC, uh, and Colin Maison Pierre of CM Knife Designs. Uh, they got together to form Devo Knives. We know about this. Uh, this is their second release coming out, and it is so cool. It's called The Buzz. Everything is beer-themed with them. The first one was The Stout. This is The Buzz. Uh, I've seen The Growler, and they have a couple of other really cool prototypes in the works. But this one, this little honey right here is very exciting to me. I love that blade shape. Now, they're calling that a sheep's foot, um, and so I'm going with it. Uh, that... That looks like a nice angular sheep's foot blade to me. That's 20 CV steel and uh, a titanium uh, liner lock. That's right, a liner lock. I do love that. And one thing, um, you know, uh, Kev and Kevin and um, Colin are both, you know, super, super duper knife junkies. And uh, so, I mean, their love of knives exceeds much and most. And uh, knowing that, they went into this build uh, looking to see how this could resemble opening up a Zippo. Uh, really, I don't know why that gets me excited. I used to be a, a I used to smoke cigarettes way back in the day. Uh, and it was because I loved Zippos. I was like, yeah, I'm willing to trash my health for this this thing. So when I saw that uh, they were they were aiming for something similar to that experience, it really got me excited. So I'm very much looking forward to this and I'm Really happy to see um, two great guys succeeding in this venture, in this knife venture. And then, and they are not one trick ponies. And this does not look anything like a sophomore slump. This looks like a beautiful follow up to the stout. So I'm very excited for this. I can't wait to get my hands on one and check it out. So, uh, congratulations to uh, the gents over at Devo Knives. That um, pre order is open and uh, go check it out. There are a number of different ways to uh, to get it. All right, next up, uh, this is an interesting one, uh, gonna be coming out from Civivi Knives. It is a fixed blade that is just bizarre, uh, but it's from, and I don't know how to pronounce his first name, but uh, Torby Knives. Torby Knives, uh, I follow on Instagram, have for years, and uh, this is his second knife, a knife, I believe, with Civivi. He had one a little while back that looked 
let's see, I think they have the name in here somewhere, but uh, they had one. He designed one for Civivi a little while back that had a very unique, like Torby knives uh, look to me. This thing is just outrageous, though. Uh, it's a big outdoor cleavery kind of hatchet axe thing. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It looks like something out of a comic book to me. You know, it looks like something one of the guys Conan the Barbarian would be fighting would carry. Um, but. It, it it is apparently a great chopper and then look it's almost like um you know with that big void in the blade if you put your finger through there and you're choked up and then you have that blade extending all the way under your you know half the way under your knuckles kind of looks like it could be a great kitchen knife but i don't know i mean who knows I'm, great kitchen knife maybe not but but uh useful and unique I don't know. Might be good for scraping down the cutting board. It's it's definitely a unique knife, and I I can't quite gauge the scale of it. Um, you know, from looking at it, I know that's like a seven point three inch blade. So that's like the basically the blade is the length of a K bar, and I guess if you add the so I guess the overall package of this, looking at it, is about the the overall length of a K bar. If you look at it, handle plus blade, that's big for that kind of. You know, it's a lot wider than a K bar. Anyway, very interesting thing, knife, knife like, axe like object, and uh, looking forward to to borrowing one uh, from someone else. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I just like seeing that something unusual is happening because oftentimes, uh, I don't know, feels like maybe is this peak knife? Are we done? And then something like that comes out. So. All right. Well, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, let's take a look at some great new knives in my collection. And then speaking of greatest, we're going to look at the bestest and the mostest, the top 15 of them right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife and we've got you covered for the latest weekly knife deals. Be sure to visit the knife slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, so the first one up you've seen uh, this evening. I was carrying this today or this day, whatever, whenever you're watching. Uh, this is the Boker Texas toothpick. Now, I am really excited about this. And daggummit, having this in my hand and having this in my pocket makes me realize there is a glaring hole in my slip joint collection. And that is a hole that could be filled with toothpicks. Um, I have one very small and somewhat inexpensive and cheap buck toothpick. Uh, that gets used for a lot of grimy jobs around here. Um, and then I think that's it. I think I think that's it. And so having this in hand really makes me want a larger toothpick. You don't see large toothpicks on offer much at all. I know uh, Great Eastern Cutlery had one a bunch of years, a number of years back at this point. But look at this long, slender knife. It is so, ah, oh, this is so gentlemanly. I love this thing. I and it fits great in the back pocket. So I, I'm very happy to have this. And I do love the Coca Bolo. You know, I've been into the wood handles lately. So very cool knife. Happy to have this. Thank you, uh, Chaz, for sending this along. Um, and then um, he sent me another little knife. And, and it's a tiny, tiny knife called the Boker Shamsher. And I, I got to be honest. I, I lost it in one of my <laughs> one of my pants over the last few days. It's so small. I've been fifth pocket carrying it, and uh, I realized I don't know where it is. So I'll bring it out when I find it. Uh, but it's designed by D Rocket, uh, Daryl Cast Castan, and someone else, and it's really cool. And I was going to show it to you, little auto, but uh, that'll have to wait. Um, next up, this I could not. I just couldn't. You know, I couldn't resist. I'm in a Bowie phase, as you know, and the more I say I'm in a Bowie phase, the more I put myself in a Bowie phase and kind of justify the purchase of further Bowies because I'm in a stage and I said it publicly. Uh, but 
I actually have been curious about this knife ever since its release, and this is the Schrade SCHF 45, uh, the Leroy. Now, you might, I might be hearing some groans in the audience from my, from my devoted Bowie fans, I, or not. I don't know. I don't know. But this is clearly a knife I did not need. This was this was a curiosity purchase. Uh, I'm going to show you the sheath first because I have a serious issue with it. And that is this quote unquote dangler or what uh, we'll just call this the belt attachment. This belt attachment is um, fixed solid to the knife. So there is no give between this and this. So it's one solid piece, which I haven't even belt carried it, but it's murder. I, I can tell without doing it, it's going to be murder. Having that thing, this big heavy thing without any sort of give or flexibility in the or hinging here, uh, just hanging from your belt. I think, oh, maybe not, but I don't like the sheath and it's hard to extract this from the sheath. But once it's out, I got to say, I've uh, never been so impressed by uh, an 8CR13 MOV Bowie. <gasps> I hear the groaning. Yeah, but this was really pretty good. I mean, so I got this last weekend. I came in on uh, last Friday night. Had a fire pit Friday night with some friends. That was a that was a uh, uh, that was a trail master evening. You know, I didn't I didn't want anything to go wrong with guests there. So I used my trail master for all the the wood work and the and the batoning and splitting. But the next morning I was like, now I'm going to take this thing out. I brought the SCHF 45 out and banged on, you know, batoned this through some wood and banged on it a bit. You can see a little bit right here. Um, and it did great. I, t I brought it back in. It dulled pretty quickly. Um, and I was using paper as my test. Wait, is this? Yeah. I was using paper as my test and it, it went through it, went through it great. Now, uh, I, 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 I would use this. I got this thinking I was going to keep it in my car. Honestly, this was like, I need a car Bowie. Um, let's get something inexpensive. Uh, but it's too big and menacing to put in, in the car. But you know what? This is a good knife to take out and to have, um, you know, to, to bang around outside. I don't know. I've got so many of them. Man. But I had to see this. I love the blade shape. So I'm done justifying and I'm putting this away in the very subpar sheath. Why? Why? It doesn't have to be. I mean, it it does all right, but this part is vexing and and annoying. All right. That's the Schrade Leroy. Uh, you know, one of those uh, what do they call them? Guilty pleasure. That's a guilty pleasure knife right there. Because I actually really do like it. Uh, okay, last up. You know what? This is this will be a segue. I'm going to show this off, and then I will tell you how this is the first in my list of bestest and mostest. But last up in the state of the collection is a knife I've been waiting for for a little while and was so excited to receive and like it even more than I thought I would. Uh, and that is the Tempest Pinion, designed by Casey Spire Spirion of uh, Knives Fast. The Knives Fast channel and Tempest Knives. Now, uh, if you've been following this channel for any length of time, I recently had the prototype. He loaned me a prototype and I did a review of it and or, you know, my thoughts on it close up and uh, really liked it. Um, the in, in some ways, more than his first effort, a, a, uh, a, a fancier knife, the Mach 51, also very beautiful. But but this one just I don't know. Uh, that blade shape really did it for me. Um, and so when the pre-order opened, I got in on it. And I am not a pre-order guy often. you'll Often you'll hear me complaining about how oh, I didn't know or I'm so slow or I don't do pre-orders or whatever I say. to. Um, but I got on this one. I'm so glad. And I've had this for now about a week, maybe a little bit less. And the micarta is has really darkened up nicely, I think. A, but B, I've used it for a lot of stuff, and uh, uh, two two standout things, very different tasks. This did great through double walled uh, cardboard from a fire pit, from the new fire pit, um, and there was a lot of cardboard, a lot of packing, and this this did it all, and it did a wonderful job on the factory edge, and then it was kind of dull. Uh, not dull, but, you know, it was a little bit worn out. But the factory edge 
needed some stropping. I stropped it up and man, it was sharper than it arrived after I stropped it. So very responsive steel, uh, very nice blade. I love the blade shape. Um, and there's a, some, that tip reminds me a little bit of the 940. It's like the 940, part of the 940 that I like. <laughs> um, but beautiful shape and uh, just great in hand uh, and a real addictive fidgeter. This one has my kind of action where it drops shut but it doesn't guillotine on your on your finger it just nicely falls in so uh congratulations and great job and uh this is the first in the bestest and mostest top 15 and that is this is the best looking knife closed i think this knife looks so cool closed and uh well it's been sitting on my desk at work for about a week like this and it looks like a car or a plane or a something fast and uh it's no it's no wonder knives fast and you know you see the proprietary pivot that looks like a uh, a hubcap of a sports car but um i i i don't know this this is a top closed knife uh, so that that's top of my list. The very first knife is the best looking knife closed. And uh, well, I, I'm sure you weren't going for that, Casey, but man alive, did you succeed? Beautiful knife. I love this thing. I'm thinking of getting the uh, Lynch clip to replace the wire clip because I'm not aesthetically so drawn to the wire clips, but I got to say um, it feels stouter than most wire clips. So uh, I'm, It'll do till I uh, get a new one because I might I might just try that out. A lynch clip there. OK, next up is the most like an Italian speedboat. Now, this is a um, well, this is a, a, a descriptor I've used for a number of knives in the past. Here's one. Uh, the A2D uh, Mark one I've called an Italian racing boat or speedboat. This one, the uh, the synapse. You know, from Vero Engineering looks a bit like an Italian, like a Donzi. These look like Italian speedboats to me. And to me, that that is shorthand for a uh, super beautiful, classy, looks like it's going fast, but also actually looks like a boat. So um, this one does actually look like a boat. Um, and I think it's beautiful. This is the Boker Squail, and it is a production version of my true grail folder. Um, yeah, I would stop collecting folding knives if I ended up with a uh, Marlowe square, squail, a custom Marlowe squail. And I would have to end up with it because there's no way I would actually be able to go out and buy one. <laughs> because A, I don't think he makes too many knives, period. Uh, but B, I don't have what it costs and I have no idea what it costs. But um, but until until that day comes, this will certainly do till the real thing gets here. But love this. I think it might be that recurve. I think that this looks like the hull of a ship. Ow, that's sharp. This looks like the, is this the hull? Or that's the hull. And then that's a wave. And then this is the cockpit all slung back. And, uh, you know, there's some good looking Italian couple in there. And they're sipping on something and just speeding through, um, you know, Venice or something. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the Boker Squail, the most like an Italian speedboat. All right, next up is the most useful but weird blade shape. Weird, useful, weird, but very useful. And that is from Off Grid Knives. That's the Raptor. Uh, this thing is vexing or confounding. We'll we'll say uh, when it showed up, I was like, oh really? Really? You're going to do that? Like, you're just trying to be different? And um, that was my initial knee-jerk reaction. And I got to say, I'm I'm glad I recognized it as such because this is an awesome blade shape. Okay, you know that I always talk about how thinly ground and um, excellent the off-grid knives are at cutting anything, but definitely cardboard. Anything you need to slice, anything that needs to slip through the material you're going to be in great shape with an off-grid knife. Well, this has all of that. This <clears throat> tall inch and a half uh, flat grind on this already thin stock uh, is a great push-cutting um, 
uh, edge here because it angles down ever so slightly, trapping the material in this sort of triangular area. And then it's just very thin and very sharp. And that broken part or the part that looks like it's a broken off tip. Oh, my God. This thing is this little area is great. It is a really great uh, little hawkbill surface for pull cuts, utility cuts. Uh, you can see some action happened here with a school project a while a while back, uh, you know, cutting paper out and stuff. Uh, this is a really good one for that. Now, um, so that is a very weird but useful blade shape, no? And then look at the facets, those five facets coming together at that one point. I don't like it, but it works, and it's great, but something about it I just don't like. Um, but, man, it works great. <laughs> uh sculpted handle uh i don't like the flipper i'm not crazy about this area this area uh, i i mentioned that with carrie and he said this knife presented a lot of design challenges and that was the compromise necessary to get the knife um made the way he wanted with that blade has a nice why <laughs> nice it has a a big big footprint i mean that's a pretty wide footprint in pocket but this to me is not a pocket knife or, or not for me i don't carry it in my pocket this is one that i you take out to the back porch when i'm about to dress out a whole bunch of cardboard boxes great action best tech made weird but useful and that is the off-grid wrapper uh, not wrapper raptor uh next up is the uh, most Oh, well, actually, next up is the the Boker toothpick. I'm sorry. Uh, I've said enough about this Boker toothpick, but I'm going to show it to you. This is the most gentlemanly, the most slender and gentlemanly. Um, I, I don't have too many gentleman knives. You know, I like the bigger, more robust tactical style knives, but I have a number of them. But this one has become my favorite, and I do think it's the most gentlemanly. It's the most svelte, that's for sure. And it fits great right in the back pocket. I like it in my back left pocket right next to my bandana. Uh, if you're a guy who likes to carry your knife next to your wallet, standing up next to your wallet, this would be an awesome, uh, ow, damn, an awesome um, choice for that. That just came down on my knuckle. Uh, this comes in a couple of other uh, cover materials, but I love this Coca Bolo. Also still that weird clip <laughs> uh, most gentlemanly and most slender okay next up is the most tactical this is the most tactical list of folders that i think i have and i have a lot of tactical folders but this one is meta this is the meta tactical fo folder right here and that's the zt0200 this is just a kind of a ridiculous beast but a beautiful knife uh, designed by ken onion as you can probably see actually now that i have this out this one looks a bit like an italian racing boat too huh a little bit but uh blacked out for night ops <laughs> okay so zero tolerance zero 200 this is a such an awesome knife this was a gift from my brother um, uh, the sort of gift where I was like, wow, Vic, this is awesome. And he's like, you want it? You can have it. I never use it. I was like, no, I couldn't possibly. He's like, do it. Hey, come on. Your birthday's coming up. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Doesn't take much. Uh, but this is the most tactical because it's got a number of things here. It's got a recurve. It's got the, um, serrations on the recurve. It has a thumb ramp and it's got the, uh, giant contoured handle. This handle is, uh, I, I love it, 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 but it's almost too much. It's almost too much. Um, like if I, and what I mean by that is I have kind of, well, I have medium-sized hands and slender fingers, and my hands fit in there kind of real snugly. So um, people whose hands I've shaken that dwarf mine, I'm, I'm wondering where they're, you know, this is a pretty tight choil for a big sausage finger, you know? Uh, so I'm not sure if this is the most tactical for everybody, but to me, this has the most tacticalness to it. And plus, it's got that hex nut uh, for the pivot. It looks like a piece of, of hardware, you know. This thing is just awesome. Uh, the most tacticalist of folders in my collection. I got to I gotta hand it to the Zero 200 because it's one of the old... Uh, old lions in the group and uh, you know, they deserve, 
they deserve their uh, their due. Next up, this is also kind of in a similar category. I mean, this is a very tactical knife, but this is the best broken stop pin look. And that is the Emerson Elvia. You look at this knife and it looks like there's something wrong with it until, you know, you understand uh, until you're initiated. This looks like a broken knife. This looks like a knife that was supposed to be uh, like that uh, roughly. And then the stop pin broke and it kept going and it kept going. And that's where it ended up. Uh, I remember when I first saw this knife, um, I, I knew what it was. I knew that it was uh, for, you know, but I, I was just starting to become aware of Ed Calderon and and his his use of the fruit knife. And I was like, I think that's what that is. But my God, that's extreme and weird looking. And oh, my God, how's it going to work? Where's it going to foot? You know, and then it all made sense. Uh, by the way, that's an aftermarket uh, aftermarket pocket opener. Um, can't remember who I got it from. Uh, if you're watching, please leave it in the comments. It's an awesome opener. Uh, but yeah, this this thing looks funny, but is very, very effective. This is a knife uh, that you use in a self-defense situation. Um, well, I mean, you could use this for all sorts of things, but uh, mostly opening boxes, envelopes, and uh, criminals who are going after you and your stuff or your people. Uh, so yeah, that, that curved reaching outward blade takes advantage of your gross motor motions. And uh, yeah. Uh, is very effective in that way. But you got to admit, it looks pretty darn funny when you first see it. So there's Ed Calderon's logo, the Sneak Reaper. And uh, these are um, Vantage Point Blade Works, Vantage Point uh, handles here. So check out Tom England on um, Tom England on um, Instagram, uh, Vantage Point. If you, if you want your Emerson... Um, micarta eyesed or or if you want new handles for your for your emerson he does a great job he works on other knives too okay next one is a related uh this this kind of feels like rewards to me or awards the, but this next one is um kind of related and this is the best broken lock look we had the best broken stop pin look this is the best broken lock look and that is the vostied nightshade and audaciously odd design that works so well this is a great knife now um if you watch say jared neve's um uh, video on this knife or or stasa's they will show you and talk to you about all of the incredible ways this thing is a great utility knife uh that that obvious downward angle is what i'm talking about when i say the best broken lock look it looks like it has not fully locked open yet uh, but that is fully open. Um, and that downward angle presents the tip below or at your knuckles, making it great, uh, accelerating all of your cuts, eh? but making it great for utility style cutting, for the kind of cutting you might do where you're pulling towards you, like cutting ropes or straps on like a big crate or something like that. Uh, you kind of trap the material in this area and um, and pull. So very useful. Uh, very useful setup here a very odd looking setup uh, i'm very fond of it for a couple of reasons first of all that blade is like a barong to me it looks like the barong hanging on the wall behind me and then um and the barong is a filipino sword and then this angle of the blade to the handle reminds me of other filipino swords like most of them filipino swords and knives angle the the blade downward which uh, just makes for more efficient chopping, slashing, and cutting. Um, to have a downward barong, it, that, like the barong is one of the few that doesn't have that downward angle. But in any way, I like the spirit of this knife. It reminds me a lot of my favorite Filipino swords. It has that downward, uh, that downward tip and that downward belly. Uh, a lot of people are comparing this to a kukri. Um, I, I say it needs a recurve if it's a kukri, but you know, we can have that debate another time. Uh, very nicely contoured G10. They do the pocket clip right with the recessed uh, pocket and the flat screws and just stellar action. Vastid is an awesome company. Um, they sent me a chef's knife and that has become the house favorite. 
Um, and we have we have a couple of nice ones. Nothing custom. I'm looking to change that. Um, but uh, Vosti, awesome company. I have three knives by them, and I love them all. This one, probably chief among them, because it's just so odd. The best broken lock look in my collection, anyway, is the Vostied Nightshade. Okay, next up is a very attractive knife, uh, but a little bit more in the cleavery realm where I tend not to tread. But this is the most drop shutty, the most fall shutty knife, at least in my collection. And I've experienced a few extremely fall shutty ones recently. The uh, the North Arm Skaha and the uh, Grimsmo Norseman come to mind, both super incredibly smooth. Uh, noticeably smoother than this Towser K, I'd say no way. Um, uh, if we're going to be totally honest. And, and when I'm using the term smooth, in this case, I'm talking about that fall shut. Smooth to me is just a uh, shortcut word. Uh, smooth does not mean fall shut because my Sebenza is very smooth and it does not do anything close to fall shut. Uh, as you can see, this action is just insane. It's I think this one's got multi-row bearings. Uh, it's a great utility knife. Um, very good ergonomics. Beautiful blade shape. A little bit more pointed than, say, the Sheepdog. Um, also by Kaiser. And very, very popular knife for them. Um, this one... This one strikes my fancy a little bit more because of that blade shape, that point. And there's something very pleasing about how the main bevel starts below below the uh, the um, thumb stud here, but comes all the way up to the crest of that uh, blade. I just think it looks beautiful. And then I had to get the rich light. Even though the red micarta is contoured nicely and probably feels better in hand. I mean, this feels fine. Uh, but I don't have any rich light. Rich light is like a paper micarta. And I thought that looked like the Boson Higgs field there, uh, which I think I saw once. Uh, so I decided I'd buy this. Why not? Uh, and then uh, they they sort of half did the, the clip right. But the clip is so thin, it barely makes a difference that they didn't pocket out uh, some of that rich light to nestle it in. Uh, this I was trying to sell for a while. I might try and sell it again. But you know how that goes. Uh, you try and sell something, it doesn't sell, and you're like, oh, it must be a sign. I'm going to need this someday. So right now, I guess I needed it for right now. Okay, next up. Now, this one, um, well, this is not necessarily something uh, that is desirable. And I think it is, um, and I think this knife nails it. And that is the most like a bearing knife in a washer knife. Okay, so this is my Resco Instruments Gooseworks uh, Mekong Delta Combat Folder. Uh, that was a bit of a, a janky left-handed uh, um, deployment, so I'll use my right hand. Uh, this knife, um, when I first got it, had the glassiness, had the feel of my um, Sebenza or like my VSEP or my... Um, Spartan Harzi folder, kind of like that hydraulic resistance, like smooth hydraulic resistance when closing. Uh, but it kept getting smoother and smoother. Um, you can front flip it. Uh, just through through use, this is one of my go-to knives. I, I carry this knife probably more than any other these days um, in my front right pocket. But um, this one has really gotten smooth through use, and it's on washers, and now, you know, it's pretty drop shut um you know with a little little help and it just feels more like a bearings knife than a washer knife now that it is broken in um but this blade is just this knife is just awesome i i'm thinking about getting another one i like this so much and you know i, I initially talked about how excited i was that it was american made and it's not and then i found out it was made by best tech and i was like oh well i love best tech big deal and man, you know, Best Tech is so in the mode of making uh, flippers with bearings and that this new race car way of making knives. And then and then they're tasked to make something like this, like an American washer style knife. And man, they nail it. They nail it. Beautiful knife. I love this thing. This is my most bearing like washer folder. All right. So next up, this one is most bite 
for the bark. And yes, you saw what I did with the language, clever guy that I am. But really what I'm trying to get at is that uh, it doesn't look like much, but man alive, is it nasty? And that is the felony stop by Tops. Now, before I had the uh, the Tops Zabo Express out to show you, well, this is also designed by Lacey Zabo. And uh, by the way, he's a martial artist and law enforcement dude. Uh, so he has a lot of experience kind of needing these implements. Uh, this is a small dagger like knife, um, but it's set up a bit like a pistol. Uh, you get a symmetrical double edge dagger blade till there. And then uh, to accommodate your grip, there's a big jimped swale there for your thumb and that curvy handle that that pushes into your palm. So if you're using this in a thrusting motion, man, you've got it all backed up right into your palm and you can put exert a lot of force behind that uh, diamond like tip. Um, but this swale here with the jimping is also great for um, trapping. If you're in reverse grip like this and you need to trap your opponent's arm uh, or wrist or something uh, and, you know, in a transition or something, whatever, whatever kind of hold or whatever you're doing, this uh, this curved surface here really aids in that in reverse grip. It, it, it puts a creates a little space where you can grab onto someone's wrist or something like that. So I've always liked that um, that aspect of it that you either use it for your thumb or you use it in trapping. Uh, so you get a lot of different versa a lot of versatility out of this knife too. And then with the double edge uh, sharp dagger style um, blade, it's just it's more than you deserve in a small knife. And so that's more bite for your bark. That is the tops knives. Felony stop design designed by Lacey Zabo. Cool knife. Next one. Now this this one <laughs> this one could also go in another category, and there are plenty that could go in this category. But this one takes the cake, I think historically and and everything, and that is the most menacing. Now what am I going to show out of my large collection of menacing things? I think you know, uh, it's going to be this. Yep, the 1918 trench knife. The U.S. 1918 trench knife. This is uh, got a cast bronze knuckle duster with points. It's got a, uh, a nut holding the whole assembly together that can be used as a skull crusher. It's got a very wide guard to protect the hand. It's got a double-edged blade. And it just, oh my God, it just... Um, it just speaks of brutality. Um, this thing, I think more than probably anything else I have is, is uh, symbolically, it's just terrifying. I mean, if someone came at you with this, uh, so many things might flood your mind if you had time. One of those being like, who is this person coming at me with that thing? And where did they get that? Do they use that often? Like, what kind of a person has one of those in the first place? If you're not, you know, if you're not in a trench, it's just a scary thing looking thing and it's not just looks uh it is a devastating weapon it's quite heavy in the hand um and you'll see here's the thing i have uh i have issue with knuckle dusters i have a couple none of them feel comfortable this one feels incredibly comfortable first of all i think men were a little bit smaller in those days before all the bovine growth hormone in our milk and so this fits my hands perfectly whereas i find uh, knuckle dusters uh, that I've tried now are made for people with slightly larger hands. Uh, this fits my hand like a dream, but you could also fit larger hands in here for sure. Um, and uh, oh, and the handle itself is flat and rectangular in cross section. So it's not turning in your hand, which is a, a big deal when you're punching with a fist load uh, that comes beyond your fingers. You know, if that thing twists, it'll crush your knuckles. It, you could really damage your hands with rings on knives and with and with these you know with knuckle dusters if you're not careful this one this is built for comfort i mean i swear it's really comfortable in hand and i've hit my punching bag with it much to my punching bags this may um i hit it twice with those these things and that was just stupid but i was it was impulsive and i did not feel 
a thing. Whereas uh, with the other two that I have, uh, I did quite a bit. So I am going to call this the most menacing knife in my um, in my collection, or probably ever, at least of the 20th century, from the 20th century till now, this thing. I don't know. Do we agree? Does anyone agree that this is probably the baddest of the bad? Um, let me know what you think. I'm sure opinions vary, uh, but let me know what you think by dropping a comment down below. Okay, next up, taking it back to uh, this century, but also a dagger, best OEM knife. And there are a lot of great OEM knives, and I'm not casting any of those into doubt. I, I just don't have them. <laughs> And this one is so impressive to me. Uh, it is a Riot, uh, but the design that goes into it is also what impresses me. This is the Arcane Designs Antimatter. Um, this was also, this was a collaboration, design collaboration with Something Obscene Company. I know that uh, Felix had some some say in this or some gave some help in this Um uh, design, but the design is 100% symmetrical. Well, on the on this side, obviously on the lock side, it can't be, but it is symmetrical, and it's very impressive how this all fits in the handle symmetrically. Um, even when it's closed, it's perfectly symmetrical. I know there are a couple of others that have done that, but it's impressive. I don't think it's an easy thing to design and to have it come on coming out looking this good and this um well symmetrical i'll say it again very cool clip on this by the way you got like a there we go you got a little uh faraday tower or whatever those things are called um but uh so it's the double-edgedness of this the fact that that the design allows for it and that riot was able to pull it off so well this is the best OEM knife in my collection. And, and, and I don't know, um, I would say it's a, con a contender out there at, at least. And I would say a lot of that has to do with the design. We know that, uh, we know that Riot and these other companies can pretty much build anything that makes sense that you give them. But the fact that this made sense in the first place and that they were able to design this um, is very impressive to me. So that is the antimatter. Uh, by the way, I would love to add the hinderer Maximus and the um, and the uh, sharp by design arch nemesis to my collection. Uh, but until then, this is the only folding, true folding dagger I have. So I'll put that down. By true, I mean double edged, not just dagger style symmetrical blade. All right, next up, um, the most likely to leave an impression. And that being said, in a pun sort of way, this could have been used for that too. Impression. <laughs> yeah. I only real realized that later. I, I wish I were clever in real time and I could have done that. But uh, so this is the, the knife most likely to leave an impression. I'll, I'll have it on in the main camera first just to show how big it is. Yep, it's a big folder and it's the Cold Steel Espada XL and in full dress may as well. I mean, I have the the other one, but all with the shiny bolsters and the shiny G10 and everything. It's a it's a real uh, looker and it's a real uh, catcher of the eye. Um, this would leave an impression because it's very unlikely a seven and a half inch folder. We haven't seen one since, uh, you know, the streets of Sevilla. Uh, when we were when we weren't allowed to carry our swords and we had to carry these giant um, ratcheting uh, folding knives. Remember those days, those heady Andalusian evenings uh, fighting in the streets. Uh, this is what replaced. OK, this is Cold Steel's modern interpretation of the Navaja, the knife that replaced the sword when commoners were no longer to, allowed to carry swords in Spain. They're like, well, we still have duels to fight. We still have our our honor to um, safeguard and others' honors to besmirch. So uh, we will still carry large knives. We'll just fold them and tuck them in our cummerbunds. And and man, uh, I love this this knife in particular. Uh, this was also a gift from my brother. He got this at uh, some sort of a gun show once. Um, hey, Bob, you have the Espada XL? Uh, no. And and even if the answer were yes, I'd say no because <laughs> I don't have three of them. Um, but just look at that beautiful clip point blade and that handle. 
Uh, this handle allows for so many different grips. This one is my favorite grip all the way down here. It really is like an espada. It's like a short sword when you're all the way down here. So uh, just an awesome knife. Very, very happy to have this in my collection and probably the most likely to leave an impression. Uh, you know, you're not going to pull this out to cut your sandwich in the lunch room. Oh, see, it's so big, it hit my microphone. All right, second to last in this list of mostest and bestest is the best dueling knife. Okay, I think you know what I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna say it is. But I'm gonna show it to you. This is the hog tooth knives, uh, sub hilt fighter, made for me by Matt Chase of Hog Tooth Knives, um, commissioned by my folks and designed by me. Um, well, not design but you know stipulate all, all of the pieces parts stipulated by me um but i'm gonna widen this out and just say the sub hilt fighter in general i have the oss the the um inexpensive version of this i mean by comparison to this obviously uh made by cold steel and it has the same long slender clip point blade with two fully double-edged edges. This, this one has a much, um, both, both hollow grinds, this one has a longer bevel on the bottom. Um, and, and you know, that, that is a part of the fighter thing as opposed to the dagger thing, where the dagger would have two equal size um, bevels there. Uh, but the, the real benefit here, uh, besides that beautiful, long, uh, you know, nearly eight-inch double-edged blade, is the sub hilt this sort of trigger here uh which allows for a lot of different um different ways of uh using the knife but also extracting the knife uh once it's lodged in the ribs of your foe uh that little bit of uh sub hilt allows you to to pull it back out without losing the knife um but it also you'll find if you if you have a sub hilt like the OSS or any other sub hilt fighter um, you can get very percussive with it if you're if you're swinging it around um, and and feel very sure that it's not going to come out of your hand. Uh, whereas a normal knife, you might want to you might not want to do that drumstick sort of action uh, if you're trying to flick or or do anything like that. So the sub hilt fighter in general is just the best dueling knife, I think. If you're if you got to get in a knife duel, uh, you know if it's a if it's if someone jumping you you want something smaller no doubt because something you can bring to bear easier but if you're squaring up and uh honoring you know uh, safeguarding your honor sub hilt fighter and in this case the hog tooth knives sub hilt fighter okay last up in this list of bestest and mostest coming back down to practical earth and that is the best 300 plus dollars you can spend on a folding knife um and that is simply this, the, the AD20. It's like a modern classic at this point. Uh, the Demco Knives AD20 is probably ounce for ounce, I guess. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. But it is, if not the best, one of the best uh, expensive knives I have. $300 to me is an expensive knife. I know I paid more than that for this because they're unavailable but i just was couldn't remember exactly what it was i think i paid 400 for this uh but i had to have it you know and i had saved up for it um luckily i had funds saved up for it when i got the call that it was available um but when i did get that call i did not hesitate because of all that i heard and everything i know about the demcos and uh, john uh andrew demco and his designs and everything i had heard up until that point and man it has not disappointed this is uh, going on a year and a half old and it is probably the most luxurious um hard use knife i've ever i've ever held it's awesome like i could i feel like i could do anything with it and yet it still feels precious so that to me is the 300 dollars best spent on a folder possible and that is on the machine ground that's the mg that's what the mg stands for demco 8020 all right well thank you so much for coming uh, down this road with me uh the bestest and mostest uh this thing this all started with looking at casey's new knife and uh seeing it 
and thinking, wow, that's a good looking knife closed. And I thought, what, do other people have thoughts like this? I bet they do. Let me make a list. So I'm glad you uh, joined me. Thank you one and all uh, for joining. And also be sure to check out Sunday show. I'm talking with the great and powerful Dirk Pinkerton. What a cool guy. And man, his designs, you know, his designs are just so cool. We have a great conversation. Join us then and join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives Live, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch, where we give away tomorrow night to one lucky gentleman junkie this -y right here. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying until next time, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast